Good morning and welcome to the pinning ceremony. You can be seated. Please enjoy the comfortable seat. A couple housekeeping items we want to take care of before we get started. Uh, please turn off your cell phones or at least turn them on to vibrate so that we can go through this ceremony uh, without some sweet little ringtones going off. We'd appreciate that. Also, no flash photography, please. We do have professional photographers here who will take images of, of the ceremony, so uh, please turn yours off. Uh, please don't take those pictures. Um, graduates, each of you will be receiving a flower uh, that is a gift from Jennifer Scholl, our Chief, Chief Nursing Officer for Kettering Health. Uh, the Division of Nursing would also like to thank all the Kettering Health Chief Nursing Officers for your presence today. Uh, thank you for attending. Uh, also, for the audience, if you don't mind remaining seated uh, at the end of the ceremony to allow our graduates to, to exit the theater, that would be great. Again, welcome. Welcome to this wonderful celebration. Congratulations, class of 2021. We're so happy for you and all the effort that you've put in. I do want to start with some words of thanks, and that's first of all to you students. Uh, you have been persistent. You have been resilient. You have shown grit to get through the last 16 months of this pandemic-laced world that we've been in. Uh, not just surviving the pandemic, but surviving nursing school and a pandemic, which is kind of an endemic in its own way, right? Uh, but thank you for the hard work, the resilience that you've shown. I think if you look around this audience, there's some additional folks that you would probably like to thank, which are your parents, your families, your friends. Thank you to each of you for the support systems that you've been for these students to help them through this long process, through this journey. Also, another group is our faculty, our nursing faculty. Without their excellence, without their resilience, without their blood, sweat, and tears that they've shed over the last three years in working with you all, we probably wouldn't be here today. So thank you, faculty. So we've talked about the work that you've done in the past. We've talked about the work that your family has done in the past to support you. Uh, talked about the work that the faculty has done. This group of people over here are who are going to be supporting you, our chief nursing officers from Kettering Health, are the ones who are going to be mentoring you, leading you, guiding you through the next several years of your life. So thank you uh, for your work as well and your commitment to, to our training of our nurses. Uh, let's begin with a word of prayer. Father God, thank you for this opportunity to come together, to come together without masks, face to face, and to celebrate the achievements of these individuals here. Thank you for blessing them over the last three years as they've worked so hard. I ask that you continue to share your blessings with them as they move out into the world and continue their care for your children, Lord. Thank you for your love. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Hello. Each year, we give the graduating class the opportunity to nominate their peers for three student awards. The awards are Professional Nursing Peer Award, Nursing Leadership Award, and the Christian Caring Peer Award. I have the pleasure of presenting two of these awards to two pretty amazing students today. Um, first, we'll start with the Professional Nursing Peer Award. The recipient must consistently demonstrate compassionate care, strong ethical values, lifelong learning, accountability, responsibility, flexibility, teamwork, and collaboration. The recipient for Professional Nursing Award is Elizabeth Perkey. The second award that I have the honor of um, giving is the Nursing Leadership Award. The recipient must demonstrate excellent leadership abilities, dedication to learning, and willingness to help others. The recipient for the Nursing Leadership Award is Mason Callahan. I have the pleasure to present the Christian Caring Peer Award. Um, this is a student that throughout her years at Catherine College demonstrated um, professionalism, but above all, she was a Christian. Um, she, all her interactions that I saw were her peers were of support and enduring Christian love. The qualifications the recipient must uh, demonstrate, providing nursing care in the tradition of the master healer, values individuals as person, made in God's image, give compassionate care as a response to understanding God's love and grace toward humanity, fosters optimum health, restoration, and quality of life in suffering and dying and provide service in which God's divine spirit is revealed. I have the pleasure to award this and give it to Brianna Bauman. We also have awards for faculty and others, and I'd ask, I'd ask Denise to come up right now for the, to do the clinical one after me. Each year we provide the opportunity for the graduating class to nominate one faculty member and one clinical instructor who they believe would, should receive the Faculty Excellence Award and the Clinical Excellence Award for the academic year. The faculty who receives the Excellence Award is, must be trustworthy. Being trustworthy means displaying professionalism resulting in creating meaningful and enduring relationships. Innovative, being innovative involves creative, creatively adapting actions and responses to advance the level of service being provided. Caring, caring is demonstrated concern and compassion for others. Competent, being competent is the com uh, commitment and ability to perform specific job functions based on established standards of practice. And collaborative, being collaborative means patients and customers benefit when most when our employers, physicians, and others cooperate in a team effort. The Faculty Excellent Award recipient this year is Devin Adams. Thank you. 
I would like to announce that this clinical instructor is phenomenal and the class has voted this person as the Clinical Excellent Award recipient and that goes to Christina Collins. The next award is called the Anna Mae Vaughn Nursing Excellent Award. Anna Mae Vaughn was the first director of nursing at Kettering College. She did a phenomenal job then, but then she came back out of retirement and I had the privilege of working under her for several years as we were searching for another person to be the director. She was a phenomenal woman with many talents. And this award, uh, the person who receives this award has those same talents. They have to demonstrate the trustworthiness, the innovation, the caring, and the competence, as well as collaboration. In addition, they have to have passion for the transformation of lives through education, research, and practice. They have to have vision for the improving future of nursing and nursing education and a commitment to support membership, mentorship for colleagues, faculty, and anyone who interact with her and has a need. They also have to be a humanitarian who exhibits compassion towards anyone in need, which includes students, her brothers and sisters in the mission field. The recipient this year shows all of those she has been my mentor for many years. She has demonstrated much work in nursing education. She has a humanitarian piece as she has been in the mission field. And she has a passion for education, research, and practice as she was the dean at one point of the college. This year's Anna Mae Vaughn recipient is Beverly Call. Good morning. Can you guys believe we're here? Congratulations. And it is my privilege and pleasure to represent 3,500 of your nursing colleagues from Kettering Health, and they send their greetings and congratulations to you this morning. And a thank you, a thank you for choosing this profession. And so this morning, it gives me great pleasure to award our Called to Care Award. And this award is being um, given to one of your colleagues who demonstrates these values. This individual demonstrates a commitment to provide exceptional care to every patient, every time, everywhere. This colleague exhibits a knowledge and skill set that cares for the whole person, body, mind, and spirit, exudes a genuine character of compassion, respect, and integrity to all those they interact with during the course of their work. This individual values a faith-based healthcare organization that sees daily work and patient care as a sacred calling and finds meaningful purpose in extending a healing ministry dedicated to easing pain and suffering of those in need. In addition to um, a plaque to honor and thank this individual, it's also our privilege to provide this, um, this individual with a $500 check, which you will be receiving. Um, and so with that, it is my great honor to award this to Joelle Taloyan.
The scripture today is from Colossians 3, 12 and 17. Verse 12, since God chose you to be the holy people he loves, you must clothe yourselves with tenderhearted mercy, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Verse 17, whatever you do or say, do it as a representative of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks through him to God the Father. Good morning. Thanks for everyone for coming and um, being a part of such an important milestone in our life. Our speaker for this morning is Beverly Cobb. Beverly Cobb is a 1972 graduate of Kettering College of Medical Arts. She received a bachelor's in nursing from Andrews University, a master's degree in mental health nursing from Loma Linda University, and a PhD in educational leadership from Andrews University. She served six years as missionary and mom to her little children while in Cameroon, West Africa. Beverly has worked for Kettering Health since 1985 as a teacher, nursing department chair, and college administrator. After leaving Kettering College in 2014, she worked in administrative role in graduate medical, medical education at Kettering Health, where she wrote accreditation applications for osteopathic residency programs excuse me, to transition into a new accreditation system. She returned to graduate school to complete a psychiatric mental health nurse practitioner program at the Ohio State University in 2016 so that she could spend her remaining career years working in direct patient care. Currently, Beverly works part-time as a nurse practitioner at Kettering Behavioral Medical Center. Beverly is most proud of and grateful for her family. Her husband of 47 years is a dentist with practice in Centerville, Ohio. Her daughter, a dental hygienist, two pastor sons and their families, including six very special grandchildren. Please help me welcome our speaker, Dr. Beverly Cobb. Thank you, Angela. Good morning, everyone. It's such a pleasure to be here. Graduates, nursing graduates, what a lovely sound that is. Family members, guests, faculty, staff, and administration. This is such an important milestone. And I would like to echo the words of Scott when he talked about the incredible accomplishments during this time of the pandemic. <clears throat> As any of us know who've been through nursing education, it is a hard program. Whether you have just finished it or whether you finished it many years ago, as did I, I remember it being a very hard program. Those of you who stand close by to the graduates today and have seen their efforts and their work, also know in some respects what a hard program it is. But I think this year's program completion individuals deserve a special recognition because since March of 2020, your studies have been occurring during this pandemic. You and all the people who are orchestrating your educational endeavors, the faculty, the staff, the frontline nurses, the administrators, and the leaders at the various clinical sites have had to do what my friend, a nursing educator in Texas, who I asked her how her program was doing during the pandemic, and she had three words for me that described how she was relating to her program. Pivot, pivot, pivot. Everything was constantly changing. Having to adjust to the myriad of challenges that the pandemic brought, that has not been easy. So kudos to all of you, not just the graduates, but all of you who have had a part in this educational process. Several months ago, I read an article in Medscape that provided me with the ideas for this brief talk. 
By the way, graduates, if you have not subscribed online to Medscape, please take an opportunity to do so. It's free, it's an online email that comes to you and it offers regular interesting posts for healthcare providers, an opportunity for discussion back and forth, that's your thing too, but mostly I like it for the educational updates that it provides, including some opportunities for free CEUs. That's never a bad thing. The author of the article, Dr. Alan Block, wrote about, his title was called The Ripple Effect of Being a Physician. He had had an encounter with a patient that caused him to reflect as a middle-aged person. Um, we start to do that. I'm no longer middle-aged, but certainly now as I'm older, I really do. And his reflection was, I want my life to mean something. If you, like many individuals who chose nursing, you decided to enter this field of work, not because it was easy or glamorous. Within the last decade, research studies by Jirway and Rudman identified two of the strongest motivators for entering nursing. The first one was the wide range of possible tasks and areas to work in. All of the different specialties of nursing that are available are just extraordinary for this field. And then the different roles that one has even within those areas of specialty. So that was the first area. The second one was, and this should be of no surprise, wanting to care for and help others. Well, while you may have some anxiety right now about the immediate future, facing your licensure exams, for, for most of you here, settling into a job, what it's like post-graduation, believe me when I say that you will develop, probably within this next year, everyday routines, routines of uh, passing medications, doing IVs, doing health assessments, assisting with bathing and toileting, helping patients manage their pain, teaching patients and families. In a way, all of those will come to be routine activities and coupled with the fast pace of the schedules, the long work days that bring physical and emotional demands it may leave you sometimes wondering if the care you have provided to patients and their families has made a difference. Will the career that you choose, for good reasons, start to feel like just a job? I love the thoughts that Dr. Block shared. The job isn't about me. It's about the people who are here for my care. The real reason and meaning is the impact that we have on their lives. Our care may set off, get this, a chain reaction that we can't see. Perhaps the patient that you help will return to work and initiate some action that will bring a marked benefit to us all. Or someone in their circle, freed or inspired by their improvement, will bring about such a change. It's like tossing a stone into the pond. Our actions in nursing in his case, he was talking about physician work, but it certainly applies to nursing, can have effects far beyond where the pebble landed. Let me illustrate what I mean. My mother, Betty Brendel, and her twin sister, Jane, experienced tragedy at the age of six when they learned that their mother abruptly died at the age of 43 during the night from heart disease. My mom and my aunt were whisked away for a two week period of time to a relative's place not knowing what had happened to their mom and were just told when they came back, she's gone. My grieving grandfather was very perplexed and distraught about how he was going to raise the young girls and their older brother. Through what I believe were a series of providential circumstances, a young, childless, newly divorced woman came to live with the family to help provide care for the children until other arrangements could be made. Months turned into years and this woman became Mommy Laura to the girls and eventually just Mom. Though Laura never had a romantic relationship with my grandfather, her influence was indelible on the twins' lives. 
She taught them many things and gave them a solid grounding at a time when their life was so fragile. She shared with them, as they were growing up, an actual dream that she had had many years earlier, that she would have, quote, girls who were nurses. Both my mom and my uh, aunt never wanted any other career than to be a nurse. The twins graduated in 1946 from a diploma program in New England. Of course, in 1946, that was the main nursing educational program that was available. Their adoptive mother, Laura, and their father were proud observers. Mom worked as a nurse in Nigeria, West Africa. She worked as a hospital staff nurse, an office nurse for general practitioner, as they were called back then. She then entered her favorite role of nursing, the role that carried her into the latter part of her nursing career. She became a nursing educator. She always said it was the best thing she ever did. She first graduated and edu educated and graduated LPN students. And then she transitioned to Kettering College of Medical Arts, as it was known back then, in the late 60s until 1988 when she retired. This is my mom, Betty Brendel, at 96 years of age. I'm wearing her pin today from New England Sanitarium and Hospital. She passed away in our home last November, months after her 96th birthday. What a long and good life she lived. One of the biggest blessings we had during my mom's 18-month decline, and it was indeed a very slow decline, was the support of hospice. A very special thing that they do for nurses who are in their care is to celebrate that person's contributions as a nursing professional. A team of nurses contacted me to help arrange and prepare a brief ceremony of honor, complete with white nursing uniforms, very important to my mother, nursing capes and caps, once again, very important to my mother, and a nightingale lamp. This was the nightingale lamp that they presented to my mom. And here are the ladies who did that wonderful presentation. My mom really did love their uniforms. She's never quite fully understood the scrub thing. I've tried many times to tell her that uh, hats get stuck under equipment and scrubs are much more cleanly, but no, this was her way. This touching and meaningful, thoughtful sermon was so important to mom. She couldn't believe that individuals she didn't even know would recognize the work she had done many years ago. And it had been years indeed since my mother had worked as a nurse because she was privileged to live another 34 years after she officially retired. Now, I'm sure that some in this gathering today will understand from personal experience the important role that hospice plays in our healthcare system the support of nurses and aides who provide to patients and their families that promotes the mind, body, and spirit healing is so important, especially at a time when the physical body is not improving and it would take a God-given miracle for that to happen. So let's tell another part of this story. It's a crucial part that shows the ripple effect that went from my adoptive grandmother to my mom becoming a nurse who taught at Kettering College, to the life of another person named Betty and what she gave to our local community. Meet this Kettering College of Medical Arts, because it was still of medical arts at the time, nursing graduate from 1970, Betty Schmall. This is Betty in her younger years at age 34 she was in Kettering's second graduating class. At that time, Kettering's associate in nursing degree program was the only degree granting nursing program in Dayton. Think about that. There were a couple of diploma programs in town, 
And in 1973, one of these programs would become the Wright State University College of Nursing, the baccalaureate program at the Wright State University College of Nursing and Health. This was transitioned from Miami Valley Hospital's diploma program. In 1973, Betty enrolled after she graduated from Kettering College. She enrolled at Wright State, graduated in 75 with her baccalaureate degree. Then in 1978, she graduated from Ohio State University School of Nursing with a Master of Science in Nursing degree. Betty Schmall was a very busy lady. She was a mother of five. She was married. She was a college and university student for almost a decade and a caregiver to her mom. During this time of caregiving to her mother, she developed a burning passion for end-of-life care. And it was the result of the care that she gave to her mom who had terminal cervical cancer. This passion led Betty to be the founder of Hospice of Dayton. How many of you have heard of Hospice of Dayton? Lots of hands here. Through Betty's efforts at the beginning of 19, the early 1970s, culminating in 1978 with the founding of the Hospice of Dayton, our community was, get this, one of the first communities in the United States to introduce hospice concept. This was a concept that was brought over from Europe. But at the time, hospice care was certainly not in vogue and carried some misunderstandings and prejudices, both within the medical community and within the general public. Listen to Betty's words. with people ignoring them because there wasn't anything you could do for them. And I remember one, one time a doctor told me that it was ridiculous to think it took a nurse to provide care to a dying patient because I ought to be working where I could use my skills to save people. And I told him that I thought he was wrong, that I was saving a different part of them in a different way. But, you know, that kind of attitude was everywhere in the medical field when we started hospice. What a gutsy lady. Betty had to work diligently to bring support from the Dayton area hospitals. And at that time, there, was not, there were not hospital systems in Dayton. There were five or six individual hospitals. So she had to go painstakingly from one to another to another to build that level of support. This nonprofit organization, Hospice of Dayton, served just five patients in 1978. It has grown to be a strong and diverse hospice organization that serves over 200 patients per day in over eight counties in Southwest Ohio. We may never know in this life what ripple effect our lives will have, and that's okay. As Dr. Block wrote, it's not about us. It's about those whom God has put in our pathway to serve. Scripture tells us the attributes that we will demonstrate in order to best serve those in his name. Since God chose you to be the holy people he loves, you must clothe yourself with tender-hearted mercy, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Above all, clothe yourself with love and let the peace that comes from Christ rule in your hearts. May God richly bless you as you use these gifts and what you have learned at Kettering College to serve others. Good morning, everyone. Let me first start by saying that we are all so thankful to each and every one of you for being able to make it out this morning and show your support for us throughout this journey. I want to take this time to ask those in the audience that if you are a parent, grandparent, sibling, child, family member, professor, or friend of one of the graduates to please stand up. 
I'm sure we haven't been the best to deal with the past few years, and I want us to take this moment to applaud those who have supported us throughout this journey. Back in 2017, or 2019, Professor Huber told us that nursing school was a marathon. Well, if you see me running, I suggest you start running too, because something is chasing me. <laughs> so, um, if it's a marathon, a marathon is 26.2 miles, divided over six semesters, divided um, is about 4.4 miles a semester. In foundations, we all lined up to the start line, eager, bushy-tailed, bright-eyed, and ready to go with an empty backpack on our backs. However, some of us did not have an empty backpack. We each came to Kettering College in a different stage of life, and I want you to think of each life experience as a rock. <clears throat> a rock for a husband or a wife, a rock for children, a rock for employment, and as we keep growing, we add more rocks. Some of these rocks are awesome, but they still add weight and responsibility to our backs. <clears throat> so all these rocks filling our back makes this journey more difficult even before we took the first step. However, along this winding marathon, we added more. Some of us started relationships, we bought a house, bought a new car, some of us got married, some of us had babies, congratulations guys. Some of us are planning weddings, and then some of us also had some other situations that weren't as happy. We had to go to part-time or quit work all together so we could focus on our school. We ended relationships, we had mental health issues, and we grew, and our pace began to slow. And I'm pretty sure that older adult was the start of the incline of this marathon. I mean, let me tell you, yikes, right? And then we decided, well, what the heck? You know, we're already carrying all these rocks. Let's add a big boulder called COVID-19. And then this slowed our pace to a crawl. So we went from being in classroom, having the access to all the resources like the library and those long needed breaks during those three hour lectures to being at home in our comfort zone, to being at home in our comfort zone behind a computer. And I don't know about you guys, but self-discipline is a hard trait to have at home. So this added a boulder and a rock of anxiety and fear for what is to come next. It was not just hard for us, but our professors as well, from going to live to remote. There was many lagged Zoom meetings, many inaudible conversations, and we were participating, but it seemed like we weren't because of the delay. <clears throat> and our concern grew with the quarantine orders in place. Clinicals were difficult to find due to the virus and hospitals not wanting that many people in the units due to the virus. Finally, we reached the last leg of the race, the downhill part. However, it was more of a steep decline and so we had to even be careful with our footing. We adding rocks to those who had night shift clinicals, but day shift proctored exams. And in the midst of the battle, something happens. Our parents brought us a supper and they took a rock from our backpack. Our professors gave words of encouragement and Bible verses reminding us that we are all children of God and we're never alone. Our kids drew us a picture, something so small and unimportant, but to us helped relieve some of that stress. And then with each little boost of encouragement, the backpack became lighter. And even more amazing is that those of our classmates who are marathon runners, like Rayanna, Richard, and many others, who were so close to the finish line, they look back and they see their fellow students are falling behind. And they do not continue the race. They turn back and help those of us that are struggling to find our footing. And we all finish the race together with the help of sharing study guides, words of encouragement, little video clips, and even a listening ear. And now today, we celebrate our finishers' medals in hand because it's not about a PR or the gold, silver, or bronze. It's about how although each of us run our own race, we are all interdependent and never alone. 
I hope that as we become seasoned nurses, we remember this sentiment when we see a student nurse that is in the middle of their own marathon and might need a rock lifted from their bag. Thank you. Well, good morning. My name is Lisa Huber, and I'm stepping in for Dr. Joan Yulith, who could not be here today, though she really desperately wanted to be here to celebrate this event with you. But I have the privilege of calling each one of you to the stage, finally, yay, to receive a high honor in nursing tradition. The nursing pin from Kettering College. The tradition of individualized nursing school pins goes back many years. And behind each design, there's a story. Each nursing pin is unique. However, none of the hundreds of pins issued by schools throughout the United States has a more interesting or inspiring history than the one that you are about to receive. The pin was designed by Jeannie McCoy Spratt, a member of the first nursing class of the then named Kettering College of Medical Arts, as you've heard today. Mrs. Spratt was a professional artist when she decided to go for a second career in nursing. Although she found her artistic efforts fulfilling, once she completed her work, she felt emptiness. She had no way of knowing how her work affected others or the lack of feedback that troubled her. She considered giving up art entirely because it wasn't helping anybody. I felt, she said, I felt I needed to get to know the people I served. She applied for the nursing program at KCMA and, sub and in the subsequent months became friendly with the nursing faculty. One day after a discussion of hopes and ideals, the nursing director at the time, Anna Mae Vaughn, threw her an artistic challenge and she said, draw a picture of your ideas of nursing service meshed with the goals of Kettering Medical Center. Mrs. Spratt came back with a beautifully drawn soft pencil sketch which included as you can see kind of here in the seal in behind me, the lamp of service from the first Kettering seal, a book representing the institution's biblical and religious heritage, a shield bearing the traditional serpent and staff medical symbol, all superimposed upon the world globe. Behind them burned the tor torch of knowledge. A pleased faculty accepted its drawing as a basis for the school's nursing emblem and resulted in the pin design you see displayed. And it's on your program, I believe, as well. An engraving company reproduced it in the college colors, green and gold, and on a black background. And the first pins were distributed to the KCMA graduating class, the class of 1969. The design did not go unnoticed in nursing circles. In 1974, it was given the number one place in a composite color study of all nursing's pins across the whole United States. The study appeared as, on the cover of the RN magazine. The young woman artist who graduated in the first KCMA class eventually returned to her first profession and is one of the foremost women wildlife artists in the United States. She currently lives in Alberta, Canada, and her paintings are signed A.J. McCoy. This is the story of your pin, so please come forward as your name is called to receive yours. Brooke. Ashley Ochterman, Emmy Armstrong. Brooke plans to obtain her critical care nursing certification, and Emmy is excited to be working in the neonatal intensive care unit. Heather Gehring, Madison Noel Jackson. Heather is planning on starting a career as a nurse in the emergency department. Madison has accepted a job as a labor and delivery nurse at Miami Valley Hospital. She plans to further her education to become a midwife later on.
Kensley Young, Cole Gregory, Gregory Weitzel. Kensley will be working in the Grandview Emergency Department, and in five years, he plans on going back to school for his graduate degree as a nurse practitioner. And Cole is moving to Tampa, Florida, and is planning on working in Tampa General Hospital. He's applying to their critical care res residency program with the goal of working in one of the ICUs. Eventually, he would like to attend grad school to become a nurse practitioner specializing in outpatient family medicine. Zoe Mariel Joan Onspa, Travion Bailey. Zoe plans to work at Miami Valley Hospital, and Travion wants to continue learning and helping others in need. Jamie Marie Barker, Lisa Whiteman. Upon graduation, Jamie plans on working at Kettering Medical Center in the SICU, or the Surgical Intensive Care. After gaining experience as a nurse, her future plans are to return to school to obtain her master's degree. She would like to thank her husband, Kevin, her two children, and the rest of her family and friends that were a continuous support throughout her college journey. She said she would not be here today if it wasn't for you. Lisa plans on working in the SICU at Kettering Hospital, potentially becoming a critical care nurse educator and obtaining her master's. She hopes to provide education, faith, and guidance to future generations of nurses. Lisa, come back and see us whenever you're ready to become a nursing professor. Rayana Beth Bauman, Richard Berry. Rayana wants to special, is specializing in neuro or cardiac and maybe someday go on towards nursing education. So Rayana, you can come back and see us too. She's coming, but uh, she right now her plans are to get married and she's moving back home to California in October. Richard Berry is going to, has plans to become a mental health nurse and a nurse practitioner in mental health. Laurel M. Bishop, Caitlin Black. Laurel plans to go to work in the hospital setting and possibly sometime in the future go to get her NP license or her nurse practitioner license. Caitlin's future plans and goal is to work as a mother baby nurse where she can care for new mothers and their infants. Sophia Minder, Madeline Brown. Sophia wants to work as an RN for a couple of years to get some experience and then continue her education to get a, a doctor in nursing practice degree. Madeline is just excited to be working as an RN. Adelina Perez, Mace Trevor Callahan.
Adelina plans to become a pediatric nurse and help build a therapeutic environment through their very difficult times. Mason will be starting his career in Colorado. Madeline Rose Burton, Mackenzie Ann Carmine. Madeline plans to pursue a career in labor and delivery. Mackenzie will be working at Soin Medical Center in the special care nursery post-graduation. She hopes to one day work in the neonatal intensive care and or become a travel nurse. Kyle Lease, Karen Taylor Cook. Kyle plans to begin working on his master's degree as soon as he starts his career on a medical surgical unit. Karen is becoming an operating room nurse. Erica McHouston, Kristen Eckberg. Erica has the goal to start her career as a nurse in the labor and delivery area. Kristen is, has become a NICU nurse and wants to obtain her master's in nursing education, or master's in education, master's in nursing. So it's putting something back to... <laughs> Back to you, Kristen. Come back and see us after graduation if education is still what you want. Jenna Norvell, Paige Glodowski. Jenna plans to work on the oncology unit, and eventually become a chemotherapy nurse. She plans on going back to school to become a nurse practitioner. Paige currently is undecided about her plan. There are a lot of possibilities out there for you, Paige. But she would like to give thanks to her family and friends for the continued support and the professors who have encouraged and challenged her in every way, every step of the way. Anthony Hopkins II. Mia's not here. <laughs> Anthony plans on working in mental health or becoming a forensic nurse. Anthony would like to give thanks to his family who supported and cheered him on and who never let let uh, him give up, and to the faculty at Kettering College who pushed him to keep going. Chadwick Hewlin, Macy Renee Hewlin. Chad plans to get a master's in hospital administration and a master's in business administration and work as a hospital administrator. Macy 
will work in the coronary care unit at Kettering Medical Center and hopes to go to anesthesia school in the future. Zachary James Hoffman, Allison Logan. Zachary plans to incorporate his academic and clinical experience in developing, his, in developing into as a successful nurse and promote, especially to men, into the, into the nursing profession. He's going to assist patients to the greatest capacity he can through the advancement of education and skills. He would like to give thanks a thousand times over for the clinical instructors and the professors that continually encouraged him during the toughest of times. He wants to give a special mention to his wife for the same encouragement as well as her unconditional love support, which is immeasurable. Allison plans on working on the trauma unit, then going back for her master's degree. Amber Nicole Johnson, Jade Alexandria Johnson. Amber is going to work on the critical care unit and then go back to school to pursue an education in nurse anesthesiology. She wants to give thanks to her family for dealing with the, the emotional roller coaster that she's been on for the last three years. Jade wants to, aspires to one day achieve her certification as a nurse practitioner and to continue to serve her community. She would like to thank her mother for all of her support. She said she would not be here if it weren't for you. Ashley Malson, Mackenzie Rochelle Williams. Ashley will be moving to Tampa, Florida and hopes to accept a position in the critical care residence, residence prog program at Tampa General Hospital to work in the intensive care unit after graduation. She hopes to have the opportunity to pursue her CRNA school in the future as well. Mackenzie is a f has the future professional plan to work in the emergency room following graduation. She then plans to continue her education with an advanced practice RN degree. Jamie Warden, Lacey May. Jamie is moving to Atlanta, Georgia to work as an emergency department nurse. Lacey has future plans that are to move to Indiana to be near her family. She wants to continue her education by getting her master's in a few years, along with learning different languages to help provide better care to her patients. Michelle Mole, Caitlin Myers. Michelle has future plans to move back home to California and to work in the emergency department. She said that maybe uh, later on down the line, she'll go back to school for her NP, but not yet, right? <laughs> Caitlin has just accepted a position in the RN residency program at Dayton Children's Hospital. She pl plans to become a pediatric nurse there and obtain valuable experience that will someday help her in serving orphaned and vulnerable children in Mexico. She wants to give thanks to her family who has supported and cheered her on, to her husband who never ever let her give up, and to the faculty at Kettering College who pushed her to keep going. Brooklyn Patterson, Edie Pena. Brooklyn plans to work in the ER and eventually help with mental health patients. For continuing education, she has thought about furthering her knowledge about becoming a nurse practitioner as well as being a sign language interpreter. 
Edie's goal is to work on passing her boards and work as a full-time nurse at a, in a pediatric field and to continue to use her knowledge to enhance her learning as she cares for her patients. Elizabeth Perkey, Ryan Riffner. Elizabeth wants to become a critical care nurse and continue her education to become a flight nurse. Ryan, after graduation, will be working in a cardiothoracic surgery unit. And his future goal is to become an oncology nurse in an outpatient setting. He would like to thank his family for supporting him through his college career. Nadine Roberts, Krista Marie Robertson. Nadine hopes to work in the neonatal intensive care unit since she was also a patient there herself. She would eventually like to work in towards nursing management role in the NICU. She would like to thank her parents and her brother for supporting her through nursing school. She'd like to also thank God for giving her the physical and mental strength to make it through the program. Krista plans to grow as a new nurse every day and be the best that she can be. She's unsure of where the road will take her, but she's ready for the new journey. She would like to thank everyone that has supported her throughout the journey. She said she couldn't have done it without each and every one of you. Andrea Saudi, Carrie Ann Danae Schwartz. Andrea hopes to transition from LPN to RN. Congratulations, you've done that today. Work in a maternity setting and continue your education with IBCLC, maternal fetal monitoring, as well as obtaining her maternal newborn nursing certificate. She's accepted a position with Clinton Memorial in maternity and lactation. She would like to thank her family and friends for supporting me through this long journey. Ethan and Ezra, mommy loves you. Carrie Ann's future goals are to work as an RN with kiddos and babies. She's also praying and hoping to one day step into international medic medical mission work. She's beyond thankful for the past two years of faith-filled education. She's loved seeing God's presence throughout the entire journey. Danielle Seni, George Stephen Senuaji. Danielle is hopeful to obtain a job as a traveling nurse in the future. George has nothing planned yet, so George, opportunities await you. Any nursing recruiters out there? Macy Styers, Emily Top. <clears throat> Macy plans on obtaining her minor in psychology to assist her in getting a job in that specialized field of psychology. Emily will be working at Soin Medical Center on MedSurge 4 and would like to continue her education to become certified in wound care. Laura Margaret Tranovich, Taylor Madigan Wallace.
Laura plans to be the, the best nurse that she can be. She wants to give thanks to her family for the support in her life. She said she would not be here without them. Taylor plans on working in the ICU after graduation and maybe one day do travel nursing to be able to experience new places, new people. She wants to thank her parents for their unwavering support and encouragement as she pursued her nursing education. She couldn't have done it without them. Joelle Taloyan. Joelle plans to start off her nursing career in the surgical ICU at Kettering Health in Dayton, and she hopes to achieve her CCRN. Congratulations, class of 2021 pre-licensure BSN students. Good morning, everyone, and congratulations to all of the new grads, and welcome to the club. I volunteered to do the reflections for the BSN completion program because I wanted to let others know what a wonderful school the Kettering College is. Three years ago, as I started my 27th year as a registered nurse, I also started my journey to complete my nursing degree. And if I can be transparent, when I started this journey, I only told a few people that I was in school, my immediate family, my close friends, and of course, my coworkers knew. The reason I didn't tell more people was because in my mind, I wasn't sure I could do it. But as the end of my journey came closer, I began to have a sense of a pride in my accomplishments because I now could see the light at the end of the tunnel. See, all this time that I'd worked in the field, I never thought I needed to go back to get my BSN. Even though my coworkers were completing their degrees, mainly as a stipulation of employment. But this was not the case for me because I was grandfathered in. After talking with my coworkers and asking which school they would recommend, I decided to go to the Kettering College. <laughs> and it was the best decision I've made regarding my education since graduating from nursing school in May of 1991. And I'm sure some of you all weren't even born then. See, way back when I received my diploma of nursing, I had never heard of online classes for nursing school. The big thing for RNs back then was going from a three-year program like the one I was in to going to a two-year accelerated program. From the day I applied to Kettering College online until I received my acceptance letter in the mail. They walked me through every step via the phone or online. For someone like me who tried to use every excuse in the book as to why I shouldn't go back to school, none of them worked. I said things to myself like, I'm not disciplined enough for online classes. I need to be in a classroom with a teacher in front of me. My life is too busy. I've waited all this time, why bother? It's almost time for me to retire. And the best one of all is I'm too old. 
but my village, who is here with me today, my husband, my children, and my soon-to-be son-in-love, and my director of nursing, Carol Pierce, who is here to pin me, pushed me and cheered me along every step of the way. Kettering College made going back to school a great learning experience for me. Although I never set foot on campus, they never missed a beat keeping me well informed of everything I needed to know. And I must also say, during the pandemic, I watched them leap into action and do everything in their power to ensure the safety and well-being of their staff and students. President Brandstatter, I just want you to know that my instructors, my advisors, and the office staff were all great. But I must say one instructor stood out for me, Professor Adelaide Durkin. Although I had Professor Durkin for several classes, there is one experience that stands out for me. It was during the completion of my senior capstone that highlighted my work over the course of school. Professor Durkin took time to walk me through the process via a video, video conference call. It was during this call that I shared with her that my youngest brother was gravely ill. And the doctor said there was nothing more they could do. Professor Durkin offered to give me an extension on my capstone project, but I respectfully declined. She then asked if she could pray for me, and of course I said yes. Even after video conference, she checked in on me. And when I told her my brother had passed, she offered me words of hope and encouragement. I would highly recommend Kettering College to anyone who was looking into a career in nursing or a program to complete their nursing degree. And in closing, as a card-carrying member of AARP, I am offering my services to be the spokesperson for this wonderful <laughs> institution of higher learning for those who like me, AARP. Thank you and God bless you all. Oh, thank you for that tribute. So as you can see, there are different paths that one can take to earning a bachelor's degree. And the students graduating from our RN to BSN completion track followed the path of earning an associate degree or a diploma in nursing first. And then they chose to gather some nursing experience by working as a registered nurse. When the time was right, they came back to complete a vigorous baccalaureate degree online at the same time. I might imagine that there have been several times this evening our RN to BSN graduates have given thanks for already passing the NCLEX licensure examination, right? Can I get an amen from the back row there? Okay. So we're proud to celebrate the graduation of the 17 nurses that have completed the online RN to BSN degree in the past year. Since our program's online, many of the students are not local or are unable to attend graduation. However, we are very happy that we have three of our RN to BSN graduates here tonight so that we can publicly celebrate your achievement. Your challenges have looked a little different during this last year. Many of you were asked to step up to new challenges in the pandemic in a very short period of time, which demanded your energy and attention in, in the job or on the home front or both. Not only did you stay focused on serving our community in the time of need, you also stayed committed to your professional development through your academic studies. To that we say bravo. So please come forward as your name is called to receive your Kettering College nursing pin. Francetta Nadine Allen. Marilee Jean Kelhoffer. Francetta plans to continue her leadership role in the operating room at Kettering Health Dayton. The Kettering College RN to BSN program is a wonderful program that would benefit any, nursing wish, any nurse wishing to get their degree completed, as we have already heard. Mary Lee plans to contribute, her current contribute in her current position as an RN and the ambulatory care manager at Kettering Health Dayton. She's graduated from Sinclair College in 2003 with her associate degree, and she's never would have had enough courage to attempt this program without support of her family.
Angela Longstreth. Angela plans to resume her studies and obtain her master's in nursing education. Angela, come see us. I would like to, to thank her, she would like to thank her kids, Eric, Aubrey, and Cruz for being resilient while she worked hard to obtain her bachelor's degree. Even when she had to focus on her studies, they were always understanding and allowed her time to study. Mommy loves you very much. So on behalf of the faculty and staff at Kettering College, and especially at the Division of Nursing, I say a hearty congratulations to you all, class of 2021. Congratulations, blessings to you all. Can you all stand for the benediction, please? Now go in peace and bless the world. And remember, you go nowhere by accident. Where you are going, God is sending you. And where you are, he has placed you. God has a purpose for your life right where you are. Jesus Christ, who dwells in you, has something that he wants you to do in and through your life, right where you are. Believe this and go in his love and in his grace and in his power. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Now I ask that you all sit down, except for the graduates, so that we can process out. And to all the graduates, when you get that in the lobby, there's a gift from the school for all of us. <laughs> 